Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Greg Stoltz with uh, Pro Literacy's New Readers Press here in our home office in Syracuse, New York. And I'm going to kick off today's session. I'm going to do that by giving you a general overview of the Lawback Way to Reading series. But first, let me ask you uh, some, some quick questions just to get us all thinking. Do your students have little or no reading skills? Do they lack confidence in their ability to learn? You don't have to answer these in the chat, just answer them to yourselves. Do they get overwhelmed easily by too much new information at once? Do they need lots of repetition and reinforcement? Do they need one-on-one -on -one tutoring? Do they need to learn how to speak English as well as read and write it? And what about your teachers and tutors? Do they want helpful tips and techniques for teaching adults? Do they like or need lots of structure and extensive support? Do they want to use materials that place an emphasis on phonics and structural analysis? Do they want resources that are suitable for both one-on-one -on -one tutoring and group instruction? Well, if you answered yes to any of these, you're in the right webinar. Welcome again. And uh, in the next, oh, 12 to 15 minutes or so, I'm going to give you an overview of the Law of Way to Reading series and then turn it over to my colleagues and they're going to say more. The Law of Way to Reading is a highly structured reading and writing series <clears throat> that covers reading levels zero to four with correlations to Tave 11 and 12, levels L through M. It's a time-tested method developed for adult learners who have little or no reading skills, has been used to teach millions of adults, both English speakers and English language learners, to read. The student books are the same for both English speakers and English language learners. In fact, all of the student components are the same, regardless of whether they're English speakers or English language learners. The series begins with letter sounds and names, then progresses to short vowels in the red book, long vowels in the blue, and other vowel sounds and consonant spellings in the final yellow book. A heavy emphasis is placed on skill development across four major strands, phonics skills, word recognition skills, comprehension skills, and writing and spelling skills. And then add an emphasis on oral language skills when teaching English language learners. Let's take a brief look inside the student books and see what they're all about. In book one, a picture association chart is used in lessons one through five to introduce the name, the sound, and keyword for each letter of the alphabet. The digraphs CH, SH, and TH are also introduced. Lessons six through nine introduce capital letters by associating them with the small letters. Lesson 10 presents the alphabet in sequence and lessons 11 and 12 introduce numbers and their spellings. The stories in book one were written to introduce sounds and words. The story associated with each chart is short with large, easy to read type. New information is introduced in easy to digest bites and the vocabulary is carefully controlled with only 132 words introduced in all of book one. And there's lots of repetition. Nearly every word is repeated at least five times. The repetition of vocabulary words used in simple sentence patterns promotes reading fluency and it quickly builds the student's confidence. 
Writing practice in book one provides instruction and practice forming letters, numerals, and words. This continues in writing in book two, but involves basic sentence writing, grammar, and mechanics. Now in books two through four, we see some changes in the chart. This chart is from, from book two. Each chart focuses on one vowel sound in books two through four. The words, not letters, are introduced. And phonetic spelling is included as well. The pictures are clues as the student decodes the chart while the teacher or tutor facilitates. The stories become more challenging with longer sentences and more sentence patterns and smaller type. In addition to the chart words, other new words are added and shown under the story titles you can see here. Starting in book three, the paragraphs are indented and gradually more emphasis is placed on comprehension. In books three and four, the written story checkup has students not only noting simple facts, but finding main ideas, summarizing content, recognizing implied meanings, uh, predicting outcomes, making inferences, identifying cause and effect, and, and lots more. Also in books three and four, a reading for living section is included in each lesson. A short reading tied to the story has the students performing tasks like reading maps, signs, schedules, uh, directions and procedures, menus and bills. This reading for living activity from lesson 14 of book three involves reading and answering questions about an airline timetable. Reading for living activities also include filling out registrations and other forms like this job application in lesson 15 of book four. And so as we progress through the books and levels one through four, we're finding that it's learning to read, learning to read, learning to read, reading to learn, reading to learn. And we're slowly making that transition can, in, in context of everyday living and adult themes and topics. Readers for each level, and by readers, I mean the readers that you see here on the screen, uh, these small readers, <clears throat> offer a collection of stories and articles at the higher levels, using much of the same vocabulary found in each student book presented as either lessons or homework at the end of each level, these readers provide opportunity for students to gain confidence and develop independent reading habits. So since much of the vocabulary has already been introduced, we're setting them up for success. And they're reading these independently. And you know, what a success, a, a, a feeling of achievement they have. For some of our learners, it, it may be the first book they've read independently ever, and that's a big deal. For the teachers and tutors who are looking for structure and support, there are two teachers' books in the Lawback series. The Lawback Way to Reading Teachers Edition is for teachers and tutors working with English speakers. The Lawback Way to English Teachers Guide is for those working with English language learners. Now note that there's the yellow book missing. <clears throat> there's no level four Lawback Way to English Teacher's Guide. So instructors and tutors would use the Lawback Way to Reading Teacher's Edition for book or level four. I'm gonna use level one just to give you a basic overview of both versions, the Lawback Way to Reading method and the Lawback Way to English method. The Lawback Way to Reading Teacher's Edition provides useful background information, techniques, and tips for teaching adults. So before they even start, as a preface at the very beginning, there's a great instructional, uh, it's a great tutorial for the, for the, for the instructors, tutors. 
Placing an emphasis on skill development, a scope and sequence chart indicates the phonics skills, the word recognition skills, comprehension skills, and the writing skills covered in each lesson. Detailed lesson notes provide direction and extensive support for each part of the lesson. Modeling hand placement for the tutor and providing frame-by-frame -frame instruction for the reading charts here in level one. Everything is outlined so that for that teacher or tutor who wants more structure and wants more support, gives them everything that they need. So a, a, a tutor who's new to working with adult learners, uh, maybe it's a, a peer, or someone who's an experienced teacher, simply not familiar with the Lawback methodology, can hit the ground running. There are also step-by-step -step instructions for the accompanying stories, paragraph by paragraph, including teacher-student dialogues, story comprehension and review, and suggestions for modifying lessons and activities for group instruction. Checking progress meeting individual needs, assigning homework, or optional workbook exercises are included as well, and lots more. Content-rich teacher guides. Now, the Lawback Way to English Teacher's Guide is different than the Lawback Way to Reading Teacher's Edition in that it first emphasizes oral language instruction including vocabulary, pronunciation, dialogue, and language structure. The first six units, in fact, of the Lawback Way to English Level 1 Teacher's Guide builds English language learners' oral vocabulary and language skills before the student even starts Lesson 1 in the student book. So they're moving from the known, which is what they know, the vocabulary words that they uh, know the meanings of, to the unknown, how to put those down, read them, and, and put them down on paper. Every lesson and every level in the Lawback Way to English teaching method begins with conversation skills, introducing and using the new vocabulary before teaching the reading and writing. And there's an oral evaluation for each level, too. Supplemental components to the series include a workbook for each level, providing additional reading, writing, listening, and speaking practice. Correlated to the Lawback Way to Reading series, and by the way, also used often as a standalone phonics series, the Focus on Phonics uses a word pattern approach to teach word attack skills, helping students sound out and spell the new words. The series has a student book and a teacher's manual for each level. As Focus on Phonics is, as I mentioned, correlated to the Lawback Way to Reading series, book one works on the sounds and names of letters, just as book one of the Lawback series works on sounds and names of letters. And uh, it'll work on recognizing beginning sounds, beginning letters, recognizing ending sounds and ending letters, and discriminating between different consonants. Books two through four focus on short vowel sounds, long vowel sounds, other vowel sounds and consonant spellings. Again, 
identical tit for tat with the Lawbach series and works on things like word families, endings, and compound words. Lots of support here. And for some, this is the structure that they really need. Two puzzle books, one for levels one and two, and a second for books three and four. So not only is repetition important, but it's also important to give them lots of practice, but in different formats, right? Keep changing things up and keeping things engaging. And the Lawback Way to Cursive Writing, which is recommended to be taught while the student is in level three, thus the blue cover, cursive writing, oh my goodness, how long before they start calling it hieroglyphics or something? I don't know. <laughs> the dying art. <laughs> Three resources on our website, and this may be new to some of you, so don't miss this. Free resources on our website, newreaderspress.com, include a diagnostic inventory for each level with a teacher's guide you know, telling, explaining how to use the diagnostic inventory or the placement tool, right, if you will. Flashcards and illustrations that you can download and print, share with students. There's a checkup for each level post-test. There's a student diploma that's fillable. And this is cool. Again, it's so important to celebrate success. And finishing a level in the Lawback Way to Reading series is an achievement that shouldn't go unrecognized. Celebrate these things. So you can download this, fill in the information, with the student's name, the level, teacher's name, and the date. Also, uh, a tutor workshop handbook if you're going to facilitate a tutor workshop in, in your program. So to wrap up my segment of today's webinar, let's review the questions that I asked at the beginning to see if Lawback Way to Reading speaks to some of your needs, right? So is it suitable for students who have little or no reading skills? I think so. What about for students who lack confidence in their ability to learn? Seeing the evidence that it's confidence building, that's what it's all about, right? For students who are easily overwhelmed? Well, we've shown you that it's handed out in small bites right? Easily digestible, not overwhelming as far as new vocabulary is concerned. How about for the students who need lots of repetition and reinforcement? Absolutely. And for students requiring one-on-one -on -one tutoring? You bet. And what about for English language learners? who also need the oral and oral skills, as well as reading and writing. You bet. Thanks for the thumbs up there. And for teachers and tutors, does the series provide teachers and tutors with useful tips and strategies for teaching adults? Certainly does structured lesson plans and plenty of support. Yep, thank you. Instruction that's phonics based and helps students develop strong decoding skills. Oh my goodness, yes, right? What about instruction on teaching in both private and group settings? 
it works for both. And we call out right, alternate methods of instruction if you have a small group or classroom. Well, you've heard plenty from me. And though I like the sound of my own voice, I think I'm done. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to hand the mic and the mouse to our national sales director, Dan Helms. Dan? I'm ready to share my screen. This is the first time I have seen uh, the reactions floating up the screen. <laughs> and that was cool. Yeah, it was. I'm going to share sound and I want to hide my control panel. Hide floating meeting controls. Okay. All right. So now we're going to hear a, a few success stories from three longtime users of Lawbox Way to Reading. And we're going to start with Gina. Now, I don't see her in here. Gina was going to join us today if she got out of a meeting early enough. So. Here we go. Hello, my name is Ron Schorsch, and I'm a volunteer at the Adult Literacy League in Central Florida. And I wanted to take a few moments to talk with you about the Lawback Way to Reading uh, series. Uh, we are happy to use these books primarily with beginner readers. So these are typically um, native English speakers um, who are reading at, let's say, kindergarten or first grade level, um, and they need to learn their letters, they need to learn the sounds of letters. And typically these are students who do not yet uh, know how to write the alphabet, they do not know the sounds of all the letters, um, so they're starting at the beginning. Um, one of the things that uh, is great about the series are the additional reading materials. And uh, for many of the students, it feels like they are reading a book, uh, potentially for the very first time. Typically, these are students who have never read a book cover to cover. So there's a sense of accomplishment that they get from that. Um, we would tend perhaps not to use the series with students who have severe issues with phonemic awareness, or at the high end, students who um, shy away from uh, a lot of pictures. Uh, it, it, it might feel to these adults like the book is a little too juvenile for them and we might use different material. Um, and uh, two other things I wanted to share with you. When we are testing new students, one of the things that I use this series for is to determine whether the student has any memory issues. So I can take, uh, for example, the first lesson of Lawbach teach it to the student and, and see real time pretty quickly whether the student has memory issues. And the last thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, uh, frequently or sometimes we are able to give the book to the student as they leave uh, uh, our office and uh, they are thrilled. In many instances, um, they've never had a book of their own and they really feel uh, completely jazzed and excited to have a book that's at a good level uh, and they're very uh, motivated. Thank you for your time. Okay, so that video comes from Gina Solomon. Uh, she's the executive director at the Adult Literacy League in Winter Park, Florida. And uh, uh, I thank her for sharing that with us. We also heard from Mr. Alan Richardson, who's with the Florida Department of Corrections. And um, this is what he wanted me to share. The Florida Department of Corrections is focused on educating inmates in preparation for re-entry into the community. Literacy is key to achieving that goal. Florida Department of Corrections has staff, community, partners, and vendors across the state whose experience and knowledge provide the foundation, skills, and tools for learning. New Readers Press is one vendor whose Law Buck Way to Reading product works with those who need assistance with very low literacy skills and want to improve. This applies to two groups that exist within the FDOC, those who are tracked for mandatory literacy and those who voluntarily wish to improve their literacy. Both groups have demonstrated progress toward their literacy goals. In addition, the program offers peer tutor training to inmates who learn proper methods to deliver instruction. 
So that's how it's used in uh, in Florida in corrections. And now we have Darlene Pedersen from New Readers Press, who's going to share a little bit uh, from a, a quote from Bonda Bryant, the program manager of Each One Teach One at Broward County Library, also in Florida. Hello, everyone. In the spring of 1995, I was first introduced to Dr. Frank Laubach's story in the Laubach Way to Reading series. I was sitting in a multi-purpose room at the library. About 30 volunteers attended the Broward County Library basic literacy tutor training that day. My new co-workers were alternating, each presenting a different segment of the literacy workshop. I was in awe of it all. Dr. Laubach's story and the Laubach system fascinated me. I thought, I want to do that, to be a trainer. I learned many things in that one day training about the Laubach program. I wish I had known what I now know about reading and phonics before I started teaching middle school grade social studies. I could have helped many youths to learn to read and write. Some of the middle school students in my classes would only write their name on a worksheet or test. They were illiterate. The trainers made the Laubach system look easy, but when I was paired up to practice with a volunteer, I realized it's not that simple. After several opportunities to practice and a detailed review of the Laubach teacher's manual, I eventually got it. I knew what to say, when to say it, and where my hands and fingers should go. The teacher's manual also had visuals, instructions on how to teach each chart, story, homework, and every part of the lesson plan. The teacher's manual became my go-to for all things Laubach. Since that day, I've been infatuated with the Laubach to reading, way to reading system. I like the structure, the pace, and how Laubach slowly introduces each concept, concept in small increments. Today, 28 and a half years later, I've trained more than 500 volunteers, staff, and organizations Broward Culinary Library and these organizations have had much success teaching adults to read and write with the Laubach Way to Reading series. I've had the pleasure to teach adults in one-on-one -on -one and small group settings. All the students did well with the Laubach, some better than others. What I really like about the Laubach system is that it provided students who had very little reading ability with a boost of confidence after the first lesson by simply using the word read. This word helped the students to transition from non-readers to new readers. Also, the continuous encouragement assists students in believing that they can learn to read and write. As the program manager of the Broward County Library's Each One Teach One Adult Literacy Program, I've had the opportunity to obtain feedback from many students, volunteers, staff, and organizations, and most of the feedback has been great. The Laubach Way to Reading series has been successful in Broward. There are many adults who enrolled in the Each One Teach One program who had been labeled uneducatable in the local public schools, but they learned to read and write with Laubach in Broward. Some of those students continued their education and completed their high school diplomas. Broward has had several teens as young as 13 learn to read using Laubach. One student in particular was able to increase her reading well enough to catch up with her class and graduate. She also got accepted into college. There are many great stories in Broward, too many to share in this short summary. Thanks, Vonda Bryant. Thank you, Darlene. That was a lot to read. That's why I wanted you to do it. Uh, and there's uh, <laughs> some information there about uh, Dr. Charles, Frank Charles Lawbuck. And uh, we'll be sharing with everyone who registered uh, the recording of this video and the slideshow. So uh, if you'd like to read more about that, you can do that in a bit. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. All righty. Perfect. Um, it's, it's not coming up correctly on my side, but I'm going to move on and you let me know if, if there's any issues on that end. So welcome everyone um, to this introduction of the Lavak Way to Reading Book One Practice Course, which is a series of interactive, self-paced, uh, direct-to-student online activities. 
Um, just uh, I, you're probably many are probably used to Todd speaking to you about these things. So I'll give you just a quick introduction um, to who I am. My name is Robin Morgan. Uh, I started my literacy career as a volunteer. And then I transitioned to become a program manager with Literacy CNY, which originally was Literacy Volunteers of Greater Syracuse, uh, Ruth Colvin's flagship organization. And then from there, I took the position with Pro Literacy to create the online tutor training, the basic literacy online tutor training. And then that evolved and I became the um, an online course, uh, professional development and online course designer for Pro Literacy full time. And I've been there for about seven years now. So let me just get something, okay. All right, so let's roll right into this. So who benefits from this online course? Well, the short answer is everyone benefits. Tutors and teachers benefit because they're able to reinforce what the students are learning in class. And this was a project that really was kind of near and dear to my heart because as a program manager, it was not unusual for tutors to come to me expressing frustration because they would be working with um, emerging readers in particular, and they would experience a lot of learning loss between tutoring sessions. So a practice course like this really gives students a chance to get in, practice the things that are difficult for them, or just to get in and just, as Greg mentioned earlier, just to have that repetition piece of things. Um, it also makes the added practice, the AKA homework part of, um, of classes a little bit more fun and productive. And it gives tutors and teachers the opportunity to target um, areas for improvement. So for example, if you had a student who's having difficulty with a particular letter sound, you could assign them specific activities or parts of lessons to work on, um, or just let them you know, go through the whole course. But it, gives, it does give them a lot of opportunity to get in there and just get that hands-on practice that they really need to help them carry what they learned in class onto their next um, class or session. So students are also going to benefit. Um, adult learners like to have a chance to work independently. They want to work at their own pace. And the way the course and the lessons are structured, it allows the students to work when and where their busy schedules allow, which is extremely important to adults. It also allows them, and this is perhaps the most important part or piece of using um, this online series of lessons, it allows the students to experience success. So for example, a lot of the activities, particularly the activities and games that we have included early on, students can't get a wrong answer. So they're performing an activity and only the correct answers will um, stick in place. And it's not until their skills start to get a little bit stronger and they develop um, a little bit more confidence as they work their way through book one um, that they start to uh, be tested just a little bit more. And that's where uh, we'll take away some of those built-in supports, but they still have pop-ups. They still have um, other aids throughout, throughout the course. Um, so this is really going to just support everything students are learning in class um, using the Lawbach Way to Reading book one and those readers that Greg referred to. So there are 12 very robust lessons in this course. Um, they all follow the uh, Lawbach Way to Reading book one sequencing, meaning that if a student is learning something in uh, lesson two of book one in class, you can assign um, students or have them working in the lesson two course. And they're going to be working on the same skills and, you know, we're just going to give them practice activities to just help them to develop and really um, 
commit those or commit those the new skills they're learning to memory. Uh, everything is written in plain language. We minimize the amount of screen text for obvious reasons in these courses to make it as simple um, as possible and try not to overwhelm new readers. Uh, mid minimal digital skills are required. You may, as a tutor or teacher, want to jump in and maybe help your students get set, um, help them get started. Um, all of these lessons, the course and the lessons are housed on ProLiteracy's education network. Um, so you may want to help them set up a free education network um, account and maybe help them get started, but they should be able to take over from there. And once they do one of the courses, it really is quite simple to um, roll on um, into another course because everything is structured the same way. So the activities change, the games change, the letters um, and skills the students are working on are changing as they would in the book with each lesson. Um, however, the way we present the material in every single one of these courses or lessons, um, that stays consistent. So if a student is comfortable working in one of the lessons, you can pretty much turn them loose after they get started and they're gonna be comfortable with the next one. Um, as I mentioned, minimal digital skills are needed to be successful here. And really all the students need to do to get started with this is, as I mentioned, you need an education network account. And we have free education network accounts for students and for tutors. And um, I'm happy to tell you more about education network if you're interested. Um, and I'll give you my information at the end so that if you need help getting set up with an account, we can do that. Education Network is the place where ProLiteracy houses a wide variety of courses and resources. So it's not just this, we have um, student resources, but we also have a wide variety of resources for administrators, for tutors and teachers, for really anybody in your literacy organization. And it's really said easy to set up an account. Once students set up an account, um, they're going to search for the product. So in this case, they're searching for the Lawbach Way to Reading Book One Practice Activities. They just follow the on-screen prompts. There's only a couple of steps to download the, um, the courses. And then they're going to open the curriculum. And when they do, then they're going to see something very, well, they're going to see exactly what you're looking at on the screen. Um, but they're going to see a list of all 12 of the lessons in order. And then they just click on that blue launch button to get going and to, um, to start that particular lesson. They can take the lessons in any order. And they can, you know, take them as many times as needed. So, for example, if you have a student, they've kind of worked their way through most of the book, um, and they're on the review. You get down toward the the later lessons. Um, that the same way the book starts to review the early lessons. Um, these lessons, the online lessons do the same. So if you had a student that you realize they're getting toward the end, but they're still really struggling with the letter sound, they can go back to the original course. They can launch it. They can retake it. You can retake the whole course or they can pick and choose. Or you could, as a teacher or tutor, could assign them um, you know, certain slides, say, hey, work on this. And I'll show you a little bit more how easy that is to do. So getting around the course in general is really uh, quite simple. So every lesson, all 12 lessons start with these course launch slides. And they're really just slides that are designed to help students know how to navigate the course. So it includes things such as showing them what the course is going to look like if they're using a computer or a tablet or a mobile device such as a phone because the navigation might look slightly different. And you'll see we walk them through um, what they're going to need to click. And really the things that they need to know to click uh, the, to uh, use the course 
are limited. They're very, very simple. We use pictures and icons as much as possible to support every action the students might take. So for example, here you see the, uh, the little house icon up at the top of the screen. Students can click there to go to the home page at any time. Um, the X in the upper right corner allows students to leave the lesson or leave a course um, and then come back to it and it'll their place will be saved. So let's say they were working on lesson two, they were partway through, uh, had to stop because real life happened or you know they just retired and wanted to take a break. The next time they go back in to launch the screen or launch the lesson, if they use that X to leave the course, it's going to save their spot. So then when they sign back in, they're prompted to either, um, you know, it's they're asked if they want to resume where they left off or if they'd like to restart the course. So one other thing I should mention, um, I told you, you know, how, gave you a brief overview of how to download the courses um, on Education Network. Every time a student or a tutor or anyone downloads a resource or a course on Education Network, it automatically saves to a transcript. And that's called My Stuff in Education Network. So as a shortcut, any time, let's say, for example, the students have started working in the Law Buck Way to Reading practice activities, all they have to do, they don't have to go through all the steps to find it each time. They can just click on My Stuff and then choose it from the list. Just click on it there and they can go back right, right back in where they started. So these lessons also easy to view. I mentioned computer, tablet, or phone. They do scale. So if they're using a smaller device, the whole screen is going to scale to fit the screen, meaning there's not going to be a lot of excessive scrolling because some of the objects or half of the text or, or half of the screen is hidden and they have to move around to see it. It's all going to be visible right on their screen. Um, so and requires uh, for obvious reasons here because we're just teaching people letter sounds and names and keywords and that sort of thing. We're, you know, we wanted to create a course that required minimal language and digital skills. So it would be as simple as possible. So you can see on the screen here, the navigation features. I mentioned the home icon or the home button here. We've got the X um, refresh button next and previous buttons, pause and play. There's also a progress bar here. And the progress bar shows how much of the audio narration is complete. And each of the slides is numbered. So it makes it a little bit easier for tutors and teachers to reference a particular slide or activity because they can, they can go by the um, area or topic the student's working in and that page number. So I mentioned the home page a couple of times and that students can return to that home page at any time. This is what it looks like. Um, if a student, I, I mentioned in the last slide that every one of these lessons starts out with the course launch, these navigation sites to help students, you know, learn how to move around the course. Obviously, if a student's taking a whole bunch of these lessons um, and they're working their way through, they're not going to need to go through those navigation slides each and every time. That would get a little tedious. So all they have to do is click on that home button. They can bypass those slides and it'll still show if they complete the course, it'll still show as being complete. Um, but that just allows them to bypass, you know, going through some of the stuff that they already know because they're they've used the course um, at the lessons enough times before. So this is what the homepage looks like. All navigation to the actual learning activities um, and the learning part of the course takes place from the homepage. So this is a sample homepage from lesson one, which focuses on the letters B, C, D, F, G, and H. 
So clicking on these little letter tabs um, with the pictures, clicking on one of those takes the students into letter practice where their focus is going to be on um, the name of the letter, the sound of the letter, a keyword for remembering that letter and a picture, the picture that associates the, the letter, um, you know, as, as part of, you know, the way for students to remember. So we have that for each and every one of the letters in the alphabet that is introduced. There's this letter practice section. Um, students, again, can do those in any order. They do not have to do all of them. You know, if a student uh, is struggling with the sound of the letter B, they can go in, they can just click that tab, they can work on the sound of the letter B, work on those activities. Um, each and every one of these letter sections begins and ends with review of that letter, and it's going to support and just reinforce what you as a tutor or teacher have already gone over with the students in class or in a tutoring session using the Lawbach Way to Reading Book One. Um, so in addition to the letter lessons, the individual letter lessons, we also have these buttons down here. So you see the word practice button, the reading practice button, and the writing practice button. So word practice is going to be where students are working um, on the sound. So that's going to be beginning, middle, and end sounds as well as letter picture word association. So again, we're just following along with the book, but we're dropping that word practice, you know, working, dropping those types of activities into one, um, one section called word practice. There's also reading practice and the reading practice includes uh, at least one story from Lawbach Way to Reading, the uh, main book, one, and it also includes a story from more stories. So those are the readers that Greg was talking about earlier that have the additional stories. And each of the stories as they're introduced, we approach it um, as, um, you know, we read it. So it's I read, we read, you read. And there's an audio button up in the corner so that students, after they've gone through this and they've uh, we've read the story to them, then we've read it together with them, then they've read it. They want to continue reading that story to practice or if they're struggling when they try to read the story from the screen and they need help with the word, they can click on that audio button and they can listen to a professionally um, recorded audio narration that's going to read the story for them and they can listen to that story as many times as they need. So that's the reading practice. Writing practice, just like what it sounds, that's where we're going to talk about, um, you know, that's where students are going to have a chance to practice writing all of the, the letters that they've learned, um, letters and words. So for example, in lesson four, um, I believe that's the A, E, I, O, and U is what's introduced there. And then there are also some words, I think they're in, on, and I've forgotten the others, but there's, I think, a total of four words that are introduced. So the same as the lesson is introduced in the book, they're going to see it here. Um, the writing practice, let's just say students are on the go. They're using their phone or their tablet. They're on a bus. They're busy, they're they're not sitting at home in front of a computer. They're taking the course on the go, no problem. Uh, they can just come back to the reading practice, or I'm sorry, to the writing practice later. So, um, oh, uh, visual cues. So you'll notice the word practice here shows up as being highlighted in yellow. As we introduce the different buttons um, and as the students are working, in the course or in these lessons, um, we use highlights as just another way to support what we're telling students since they don't necessarily have the, the reading skills to know what the buttons are say, say at a glance. So we use highlights to show them what we're 
talking about in each part. And there's also additional audio and video support. I think I mentioned a little bit of it earlier, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go through here. Okay, so earlier I talked about that letter practice. So this is just a sample of what some of the letter practice looks like. This happens to be from um, book one, lesson one, and students are reviewing the letter B. And again, there's just, for every one of these, there's gonna be a consistent format that reinforces the Lawbach way to reading book one lessons. We also do include a lot of games and activities, repetition, 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 because that's just going to be the, the key here. So I'll show you a couple of um, activities. So here you can see on the left side of the screen, and I'm sorry, I think, okay, anyway, sorry, I was having a little trouble with my screen, so you shouldn't probably see it exactly the way you do, but um, on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see a practice activity where students are working on words that begin with the sound of the letter B. So in this activity, students are clicking the speaker to hear two words. Uh, they're going to click yes if both words begin with the sound of B. And they're going to click no if both words do not begin with the sound of B. Earlier, I mentioned this um, audio icons that will use audio to support some of the activities or even to give clues in some cases. But in this case, we have this audio icon so that students click the icon, they hear the words, and then they answer, click the button to answer. And we do walk them through. So the first time they do this activity, again, we're saying click yes if both words begin with the sound of B. The yes button highlights so they know exactly what we mean there when we say to click yes. Um, and the same thing for the no button. So every time we introduce a new activity, we use highlights or we use videos or something to show students exactly what's expected. So that's one of the um, activity types. And then on the right, you see an example of a game. And here it's a memory game where students are clicking to turn over cards and they're matching um, a picture with a word. And these are all words and pictures, things they've already learned um, earlier in the lesson. So there's no surprises here. There's no, there's, there's nothing new. So those are a couple of examples of activities. Um, for the word practice, uh, we've got a lot of activities. I mentioned activities. Well, there are a lot of them here. There are 50 to 60 slides in each word practice section. So going back to that repetition, um, here we're going to be practicing beginning, middle, and end sounds and sound letter picture associations. So on the screen, you can see examples. We've got um, top left, it's a drag and drop activity where students are matching a picture with a word and they're dragging the item over to that line. Um, and a lot of these, I, I think I mentioned earlier, a lot of these activities are set up so that students are going to be successful. For example, I think um, this is one of those types of slides where if the student drags the book picture down to the word dish, it's going to bounce right back. It's not going to stick on the line. So we've tried to put in those supports or guardrails that will make sure that students are successful. Then you've got another example um, uh, where students are listening to a word and then they're, they're determining whether the word starts with the letter B, C, or D. And the other activity with the arrow on it, students are clicking on pictures that begin with the um, letters, uh, with the sounds um, of the letters B, C, or D. And you can see the video icon. The video icons are um, introduced every time there's a new activity. So for example, if a student was a little bit confused by the instructions here, they can click on that video icon and they'll be told exactly 
um, how what they need to do to be successful with the activity. And then the audio icon above that, in this case, in particular slide, is actually giving them clues. So if they're having trouble coming up with the um, with all four items they're supposed to click on in the screen, they can click that audio icon for a little bit of help. Uh, the reading practice, again, features stories from Law Bach Way to Reading Book One and the readers called More Stories. It's all I read, we read, you read, and the activities are going to introduce sight words and punctuation and numbers, uh, that type of thing. So again, on your screen, examples of some different activities. You see one of the stories. Um, we have a sentence combining activity. Again, set up so that students are going to use the uh, capital letters and punctuation to help them. And they're going to drag the different pieces of the sentence to the correct order. And that's another activity where the only the correct answers stick in place. And then there's a word unscramble that uses some of the words they've been working with already and they're dragging those letters over to spell the word. And finally, writing practice. As I mentioned earlier, here we're practicing the letters and the words. For the writing practice, there is a video demonstration of how to write each letter. So we're not just throwing the students out there and saying, hey, write the letter D. We're also going to show them how to write the letter D. And we're going to give them detailed, um, you know, detailed instructions for each one of these. And... And that's it, that pretty much concludes um, this part of the presentation, how to use the Laubach Way to Reading Book One practice activities. And like Greg, I feel like, woo, that's a lot of the sound of my own voice. But <laughs> uh, if you do need help setting up an education network account, or you have questions about EdNet, how to find resources, where to find the resources, how to move around, um, or you know how to use the courses with your students, feel free to contact me at rmorgan at proliteracy.org or at ednet at proliteracy.org. Uh, the EdNet address is where you can reach out with, you know, with any general um, questions that you have about education network. Hi, Robin. There's a question from Janice. She mm -hmm. wants to know, uh, is there documentation available to show how much time students spent on lesson, uh, on a lesson, any, any kind of reporting? Unfortunately, at this point, there is not. Uh, that's one of those things that we hope to be able to add at some point. Um, but at this point, the answer is no, unfortunately. Okay. And then um, the, the last question I received, well, there's a there are a couple. But uh, one says, is this only for book one? And, and I do know the answer there mm -hmm. that yes, it is. Uh, but someone else asked, uh, will there ever be? the other content? <laughs> we hope so. So uh, this project was actually funded by, and I can't remember, I think it's the granddaughter, boy, now I've, it's daughter or granddaughter of one of the original authors of uh, the Lawbuck Way to Reading series of books. Um, so this project was very important to her. And there has been talk of doing this again with some of the other books. As you might guess, as you saw that there's these 12 lessons. When I say they're robust, I'm not kidding. These are big, big lessons with a lot of practice activities. It's a huge undertaking, but um, I, I think it's super valuable for the students to have this support that they need in between lessons and classes. So long-winded answer, but well, yes, okay. we hope, we hope, <laughs> we hope I to want, have more. I want to thank Greg, Darlene, and Robin for your help today in presenting this information on behalf of Pro Literacy New Readers Press. And I want to remind everyone, because uh, some have asked, uh, yes, next week, everyone who registered will receive a uh, follow-up email. It will contain a link to this recording. I'll get uh, Greg's presentation and Robin's uh, slides, and uh, I'll get PDF copies of that out to everyone, as well as a, a, a page that walks you through how to set up a, a free EdNet course and access this resource. Perfect. So watch for that next week. 
Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everyone. That's all for today. Thanks, everyone.